Hi, in this video we will learn about the Schaeffer's corrections for moments. Till now, whenever we dealt with class intervals, we considered mid values, right? So for this arithmetic mean with class intervals, we were multiplying these frequencies every time with the mid value. See, f1 times m1 plus f2 times m2 like that. And also when we have that arbitrary point A, then also we dealt with the mid value of the class intervals. For the computation of moments about arbitrary point or about origin or from main, when you have a group data like this, we consider the mid values of the class intervals. So the class interval that is starting from 1 and ends at 20 is having a mid value at 10. Here also from 21 to 40, the mid value is at 30, right? For simplicity, we will consider the first order moment, okay? And we will replace this A with 0 so that the moment will be computed based on the origin 0, right? Now how we have done before? We have done like this, 3 times 10 minus 0 plus 2 times 30 minus 0 like this. Now this 3 is this frequency and we are taking the deviation 10 from 0, that is 10 actually. And we did the same operation for the other class intervals. Now the question is, why we are multiplying this frequency 3 with 10? There is a mid value of the class interval. Because the actual data of the observation is not available with us. That means we know that the speed of the car was between 1 kmph and 20 kmph for 3 times. But we do not know actually what were the real speeds of the car between 1 kmph and 20 kmph. There are several possibilities, right? That may be uh, 3 kmph, 11 kmph and 18 kmph or that may be 6 kmph, 17 kmph and 1 kmph like that. And because of this inadequate data, we cannot compute the real mean speed of the car. So what to do? We have no other way but to assume that the speed of the car was 10 kmph for 3 times. And this 10 is actually the midpoint of this first class interval that is between 1 and 20. So this is our assumption that frequencies are uniformly distributed about the midpoints of the class intervals. Based on this assumption, we get the moment as 38. Now the point is how far our computed moment is true. Let us randomly choose a third interval. You can choose any other interval, that doesn't matter. Now this is our third interval and you can see that the frequency is 3. That means 3 times the speed of the car was between 41 kmph and 60 kmph. And we do not have the actual speeds and we assume that the speed of the car was 50 km per hour for 3 times because 50 is the midpoint of this class interval. Now somehow we came to know about the actual speeds or the true speeds between 41 and 60 and those speeds are 42 kmph, 58 kmph and 59 kmph. Visually it will look like this and you can clearly see that it is left skewed, right? Now let us compute the mean based on the true speeds and it comes 53. So based on our assumption it was 50 kmph and based on the true data it is 53. So there is an error of 3 kmph and this error is called grouping error. Let us suppose we have the true speeds of the car as 48 kmph. 51 kmph and 49 kmph in the third class interval. Visually it will look like this. Here you can see that the data is around 50. That means this middle one is having a difference of 1 kmph. On the left hand side you can see that it is 48. On the right hand side it is 49. That means this distribution is somewhat symmetrical, isn't it? 
and the distribution is about the midpoint 50. Now, if we go for the mean, what we get? We get 50.7 and the error has gone down to 0 0.7. Here is our third observed values, that is 57 kmph, 56 kmph and 51 kmph and visually it will look like this and it is right skewed, isn't it? So if you go for the mean, then you will have 54.7 and you can see that the error again goes high. So what did you observe? That if you have your distribution about the midpoint of the class and your distribution is almost symmetrical, then your computed moment will have lesser amount of error, right? But when you have highly skewed distributions or your class interval exceeds the 120th of the range, that means you have more than 20 class intervals in the given range then you will have a considerable error. Schaeffer has suggested some corrections for the moments with errors. Let's see. For the zeroth order moment, for the raw moment you have no correction as well as no correction for the central moment. Also for the first order moment you have no corrections for the raw moment and the central moment. And in the second order moment you have a scope for correcting your moment. The corrected moment will be denoted by m to dash hat and this is equal to your computed moment minus h square by 12. Now this h is actually width of the class, class interval, okay. The same thing goes with the central moment also. In the third order moment, you have a correction like this. This is your computed third order moment minus h square by 4 multiplied by the first order moment about 0. Okay. On the other side, you have no correction at all. And in the fourth order moment, you have a correction like this. This is your computed fourth order moment minus h square by 2 times computed second order moment plus 7 by 240 times h raised to 4. The same formula goes with the central moment also in case of fourth order moment. Now the question is, can you apply this Schaeffer's corrections in all situations? The answer is no. There are some conditions. The first condition is that your observations must be continuous variable. Your frequency curve of the distributions should also be continuous. The class frequencies should decrease towards the two ends of the range smoothly and gradually. That means it will look something like this. In the last condition, the class interval should not be too small. That means your number of classes should not be too large. As a rule of thumb, you can apply this. You must have total frequency greater than 1000 and the number of classes should be less than 20. Okay. So if you go like this, then you can have a good corrected moment. That's all in this video. If you have any question, then you can write me in the comment box. In the next video, we will deal with Charlier's checks for moments.